Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to vote, celebrate Christmas, or Valentine's Day. Birthday parties are out of the question. They believe that those holidays are based on paganism. Secular society has corrupted true Christianity. And while her schoolmates start to contemplate college, Kim realizes that for her, higher education will never be an option. Kim did at one time say something to me about having wanted to continue on and get an education. I'm assuming she graduated high school. They're sort of told not to be part of the world. They should be out convincing other people to become witnesses. Higher education isn't necessary because the end is coming so soon. So if it's coming so soon, why do you need a higher education? You just need to get by and provide for your family. There's no real future here on the earth. Higher education has always been discouraged among the witnesses. And so what they encourage is the trades like plumbing, being a plumber, the bricklayer, construction worker, that kind of thing. One thing I have learned from this story, of course, I, to repeat myself, terrible things can happen to anyone, not just to other people. We should not assume things are not quite as bad as they could be. We have to believe and investigate that as women or anybody else, we have to stand up on our own two feet and not just let someone else tell us how we should act and live. When you ask questions and are um, criticized, uh, ostracized because of it, be suspicious, there is something wrong. I think a better understanding of, of uh, any religion that, uh, you know, is controlling. Uh, I think that the, the, uh, the police community has to deal with, you know, a variety of, of uh, cultural differences and it, it follows that religious groups are no different than, uh, than a cultural group because they they have uh, historical uh, traditions and uh, and uh, how they deal with uh, families, family issues. So a better understanding, I think, of, of these other uh, cultures and, and religions would help. sure that this story is entirely about the power of religion over the mind. I think it's, on another level, it's about planned and deliberate killing that appears in retrospect um, to have been um, without the kind of remorse that one would normally associate, and particularly without the kind of remorse that you would associate given that this is your family. These were essentially your stepchildren. This was your wife, and you did this in such a cold and deliberate manner. What can we learn from this story? I think I've learned why Jeff Anderson killed. And it's not just my opinion. It's the opinion of the parole board in his last parole hearing, which was held here in British Columbia, in February of 2009, and if you'll just uh, permit me, I'll read you from their report just why they believe he killed. And this is a quote from their report that was made public. The board is not convinced that your, meaning Anderson's rage, rage in quotes, was the sole reason for these murders. In spite of your denial, the board believes that silencing your victims before they could expose you to the police as a sex offender was also a likely factor in the murders of all three victims. And that's what I think. He was so afraid that Kim would uh, take the sexual molestation evidence that she had to the authorities, to the proper authorities, that uh, he wanted to silence them. Now, what you just saw was just a, uh, a couple of clips from a TV show that's uh, airing right now on the ID network. 
um, if any of you may have that. It's a TV show called Deadly Devotions. And uh, the episode is entitled Witness to Murder, I believe. And um, the episode is pretty much talking about the story of a uh, uh, this woman named Kim who uh, is a devout witness and uh, she it tell, pretty much tells her whole story. She uh, wants to get married, she's young, and she finds a witness, a fellow witness, gets married, and this is in, mind you, this is in like the early 70s or whatever. I don't want to give the whole story away. But uh, I'll just kind of, you know, share a little bit with you here. Um, she finds a, another witness and marries him. And this is in the early 70s. And he, uh, you know, around the time in 1975, he finds out that that's just, you know, that's enough for him right there. Is, you know, he sees everything about 1975. So he leaves. Uh, he gets disfellowshipped. Or she wants to divorce him. Is he abusing her or anything? No. She just uh, divorces him on the basis that he's turned apostate or whatever, I guess. So, and also they have had two children together. So, uh, years go by and she remarries uh, this other guy who's a complete lunatic, as you'll see if you watch the TV show. And, uh, Marriage is the marriage is not good. He's a very violent, very uh, um, abusive husband, and um, it's just it's really appalling to me. At the very end of this story, and you will see once you watch the TV show, how the ex-husband is treated. And I don't want to give the story away because I would like everyone to, to view this TV show. But I just wanted to come on here and really emphasize that at the end of the TV show, how the ex-husband is treated. So I just wanted to come on here and sort of advertise this TV show. I've shared it with, uh, uh, I, I think I told Mike and Kim, I told you guys about it. And uh, Eric, uh, I've shared it with him. And told him about it and I think uh, John Cedars I believe that I've uh, messaged him about it as well so I'm just sort of advertising this TV show for anybody who hasn't seen it to please watch it deadly devotions TV show the episode is called witness to murder and it's very informative it's a very good expose as far as like the witnesses go and how it's you know granted TV shows are embellished a little bit but it has a little I mean, a lot of reality to it, how people can be treated a certain way and how elders handle certain situations and how uh, witnesses really are. It really is a fact. So I just wanted to come on here and advertise this. You guys take care. Enjoy.